and it is really great that everybody could come here today. So the Mutographs project was impelled, was nucleated around the perception of a number of challenges and opportunities. So first of all, that's known lifestyle and environmental risk factors explain about a half of new cancer cases, for example, in the UK, and about 20% of cancers in non-smokers. And what that has led to is the opportunity to prevent some cancers because of the factors that we know that are implicated in their genesis. Stopping smoking, reducing weight, eating the right diet, and so on. So, on the basis of that, we are... We, noted, as the world of epidemiology has been noting for a number of decades, that there are still large geographical and temporal differences in cancer, indi cancer incidents that indicate that there are important unknown exposures or lifestyle factors that are causing cancer. And it is elucidation of those unknown factors that is a core goal of the Mutographs project. That is illustrated by one example, or a couple of examples here, in the case of esophageal squamous carcinoma. This map of the world shows the incidence rates of esophageal carcinoma, where the, it's colored dark blue, that means the rate is high, where it's light, it means the rate is low. And there are dramatic differences in incidence around the world, from Morocco, where it's one per 100,000 per year, to Uganda, where it's 23 per 100,000 per year. So a 20-fold difference in cancer incidence of this type of cancer, and similarly in Iran. Another example, also in esophageal cancer, Poland, where the of, uh, esophageal adenocarcinoma has a rate of a 1 per 100,000 per year, compared to UK, where it is seven times higher. So it is that sort of difference in cancer incidence, which thus far is unexplained, that has motivated the Mutographs project. Because understanding those differences may provide new opportunities for cancer prevention. But those differences have been known about for many decades. They've been studied, if you like, by conventional epidemiological approaches without clearly elucidating the causes or the mechanisms of those causes. So the background to mutographs is to see whether one can facilitate, empower that understanding of the causation of those differences through the genomes of cancer cells, and in particular through looking at mutational signatures. So there are many causes of the mutations that uh, occur in cells, whether those are normal cells or cancer cells. Every time a cell divides, um, 6,000 million bases of DNA need to be replicated. That should be, that is a high-risk event, but actually we now know that maybe one or two mistakes are made every time a cell division takes place, so it's a really high-fidelity system. But still, some mistakes get made. We know that Every day, in every cell of the body, some tens of thousands of bases get damaged by, because the internal environment of the cell is actually quite a toxic environment to DNA, and that damage needs to be removed or repaired, otherwise that will be converted into mutations, which can ultimately result in cancer. We know there are various forms of uh, radiation that cause DNA damage that cause mutations that cause cancers, such as ultraviolet radiation, ingestion of mutagenic chemicals, such as those that uh, compose tobacco smoke, similarly will cause DNA damage, will cause mutations that will cause cancer. Sometimes we can't avoid that. And this is aflatoxin, which, if ingested in uh, foodstuffs, will go to the liver, where it will cause DNA damage and mutations and hepatocellular cancer. So basically the DNA in our body is under constant assault throughout our lifetime by one mode or another, and there is a suite of DNA repair mechanisms that is there to mitigate the effect of that assault, but if in a particular cell something goes wrong, such that one of the mechanisms no longer is functioning, that cell will be prone to acquire a lot of mutations and thus become, potentially become a cancer. So we've known this sort of overview of um, mutagenesis and cancer for many years. However, 
although it's been easy to say that ultraviolet light causes mutations in skin which may result in skin cancer and tobacco mutagens cause mutations in lung which may lead to lung cancer. Actually, we've not, had, not been able to say that about other types of cancers such as brain or gly gliomas or pancreatic cancers or other types of cancer. And so it is with that in mind that we consider using the cancer genome to inform us of the processes that have generated the mutations that result in cancer. So each mutational process causes a particular pattern of mutations, a so-called mutational signature, and the first indication that, that we could use those mutational signatures to understand the causes of cancer came two or three decades ago from the study of the P53 gene, which was then our only keyhole window on mutations in cancer genomes. This was the place that we could look to find mutations. There was no other way of doing that three, four decades ago. And the classification of mutations that we used at that time was the four ty six types of base substitution if we start each at the pyrimidine of the Watson-Crick base pair. So those are the six types of substitution and when we looked at, when the world looked at um, skin cancers and looked in the P53 gene to find the mutations, we found that most of the mutations were C to T, and that made us quite a lot of sense because it was already known that ultraviolet light causes the sorts of DNA damage that will result in C to T mutations. In a similar vein, in lung cancers, there's a much bigger proportion of the mutations in P53 that are C to A, which also was understandable because the mutagens that are present in tobacco cause the sorts of DNA damage that will result in C to A mutations. In other words, those studies of P53 many decades ago told us that each exposure was leaving its own imprint its own pattern, what we now call its own signature of mutations on the cancer genome, and this is the basis of trying to look at cancer genomes in more difficult, to extract out and to get a wider and comprehensive picture of the mutational processes that are contributing to oncogenesis. One of the things we have to do in thinking about this is to elaborate a little bit that classification of mutations. That's those six types of mutations were fine when you had a relatively limited number of mutations that you have in P53 and were considering a re relatively limited number of mutational processes. However, that classification isn't good enough if we're thinking about a much wider, much broader, comprehensive characterization of mutational processes and mutational signatures in cancer because we already know that there are a number of mutational processes, of course, C to T, and if we leave the uh, classification like this, we won't be able to discriminate between them. And so this classification of mutations has been elaborated in a very simple way. Here is a C to T mutation, but now we take into account the sequence context the base immediately before the mutated base and the base immediately after the mutated base. So this is a C to T mutation at a TCG trinucleotide. Here is another C to T mutation, but now there is an A immediately before the C. Here is another subclass of C to T mutation where there's a C after the mutated C. And because there are four bases immediately before the mutated C and in and four, bases, four possible bases afterwards, there are 16 possible subtypes of C to T mutation, and when we apply that to all these six subtypes, we end up with 96 mutation classes. And that you'll see outlined many times in the course of this meeting. This is the sort of workhorse classification of mutations that is being used, but you can develop others more elaborate. And those are generally depicted in this sort of way. Here again, we have the six different types of base substitution, but now we see their subtypes. So in each of these, there are 16 different bars, so a total of 96 different subtypes, as I showed you just before. And this is the way that uh, you'll see mutational signatures being depicted. This mutational signature, therefore, is characterized predominantly by C to T mutations in red, 
and those are predominantly happening at these four sequence contexts. So you're going to hear in the course of this morning that through large-scale analyses of now tens of thousands of cancer genomes using the sort of computational approaches that have been developed, we have beginning, we're beginning to get a comprehensive view of the mutational signatures that are operating across the face of human cancer, across all types of human cancer. And in this classification, in this particular version that you're going to hear about, there are 49 different base substitution mutational signatures. And for example, this one here is the one that we believe is due to tobacco, and this is one of the signatures that is due to ultraviolet light. So the, using the, what is now a reference and comprehensive reference set of mutational signatures, we have a number of specific aims of the Mutograph project. That is to elucidate the, major, the causes of major global geographical and temporal differences in cancer incidence through the use of mutational signatures. To identify, characterize, and understand the mutational processes underlying those mutational signatures. The signatures themselves are just mathematical constructs. There is a biological process underlying them, and it's a key goal to work out what those processes are. And then to survey and begin to monitor mutagenic exposures in normal cells in humans through mutational signatures. Normal cells also acquire mutations, and actually there is a lot to learn from understanding the processes of mutation that are taking place in normal cells and the exposures that individuals in the population are receiving. So to do that, we, had, we put together this research plan, and the centerpiece of it is this first work package, which is to, find, to look at mutational signatures in five cancer types across five continents. So we'll be looking at the whole genome sequences of 5,000 cancers, and we have to do normal DNAs from those individuals, so it's 10,000 genomes that will be, whole genomes that will be sequenced. And we'll be looking at colorectal cancer, kidney, pancreas, esophagus, squamous and esophagus adenocarcinoma. These were chosen because of their differences and incidence in different geographical parts of the world, and the samples are being collected in order to represent those differences. In other words, samples from high incidence areas and samples from low incidence areas to be looked at to compare the mutational signatures between those different um, areas. So that is the major sort of centerpiece of the Mutographs program. It generates a large amount of data. The data needs to be analyzed in a number of different ways, and therefore there is a work package which is all about the computational approaches that can be used for mutational signature analysis to extract out the mutational signatures and then to work out the attributions of those signatures, the numbers that it, each signature contributes to each cancer genome. Then we have two experimental work packages. The f one looking at, the, at cancer development in rodents exposed to known or suspected carcinogens. So these are generally mice, some rats that have been exposed, developed tumors. We're sequencing their genomes and we're looking at the signatures that we find in the genomes of the cancers in these animals to look at to find define those mutational signatures and to then use those mutational signatures that are from known carcinogens to see if they match anything that we find in the signatures from naturally occurring human tumors. And then in cells, shown here are organoids, to establish or continue to establish a compendium of mutational signatures through exposure of cells now in culture to defined mutagens again, to get a set of mutational signatures that we know the cause of, and then we can match them against what we find in naturally occurring human cancers. And then finally, two work packages that are looking at normal cells, one which will be looking at mutation burdens and mutation signatures in a number of non-cancer tissues, in liver, in lung, in, in uh, pleura, to look at what the mutational processes are, in normal 
and in normal tissues, in other words, not cancer tissues, but tissues that are afflicted by other diseases to see how the mutational signatures may change in non-cancerous tissues in response to inflammation or degeneration, so on. And then to take that to the next step, which is in white blood cells, to see if we can develop an approach by which looking at the white blood cells from living individuals, just taking a blood sample, we are, whether we are able to detect mutational signatures of exposure in, white, in blood cells, because if we can do that, then that opens the door really to surveying populations of people by sampling them with blood to survey populations for the exposures that they've undergone. So those are the key goals, the sort of work packages in cancer, in mutographs. We also have a very active patient and public engagement activity led by Maggie Blanks and Mimi McCord, both of whom are involved because both of them had husbands who died of cancer and they have the family experience of having a, a relative with cancer and because this, the Mutographs program is a global initiative, Maggie and Mimi are going to a number of selected locations around the world looking at the differences in experience of patients, of families, of doctors, of public health services of dealing with cancer and dealing with cancers of these high incidences. So the whole Mutographs program is actually one integrated pipeline um, which, which ha all has to work. The bit that's working slowest is the bottleneck of the pipeline and that bit will define the rate at which the whole pipeline works. Everything depends on, everything starts from here, from the medical centers. Many, many um, locations, hospitals, clinics around the world many representatives here today from those who are collecting samples for the Mutographs pro program from five continents and those samples are going to IARC where they are converted into DNA. The samples are examined under the microscope for quality control of that nature. DNA is then made and then other samples, samples from other sources are going to these other locations, but all those samples are, going, are being converted into DNA, and then that DNA is put through the Sanger sequencing facility. All of it, whole genome sequencing, getting the sequencing data out, analyzing that sequencing data to call the somatic mutations that are present, and then subjecting those catalogues of somatic mutations from those whole cancer genomes to mutation signature analysis. So all this data then is distributed more widely. First of all, it is put on what we call trains. So we send out a train about every three months from Sanger containing the most recent data. That is the, the sequence calls, the somatic mutation calls, and the mutational signature analysis, and those trains go out to all the work packages within the Mutographs program and are available also to our collaborators if they would like to look at them. And then as those data go out, that's when the final um, analysis is done of them, correlating those mutational signatures with the data that has been collected from the medical centers, deposited in the ARC databases, the epidemiological data. That is the like, unique thing about the Mutographs program. It's very large numbers of cancers, highly selected, whole genome sequenced with good, reliable epidemiological data to compare the genome sequences and their signatures with that epidemiological data for associations and for correlations. So I just thought I would show you who is leading each of these work packages. The work package one is Paul Brennan. You will all know. This is Ludmil Alexandrov in the computational package. Alan Balmain in the um, rodent cancer package, Dave Phillips in the, uh, the exposure of organoids to mutagens, 
Peter Campbell looking at normal tissues, lung, liver, and so on, and myself in the monitoring through white blood cells. We've also already been introduced to Maggie and Mimi and the patient engagement. At this meeting today, we have the have members of all those mutograph teams. We have representatives from many of the medical centers in five continents. We have a number of other collaborators who are working closely with the Mutographs project. We have colleagues who are engaged in similar initiatives worldwide, in the US, at the NCI, in Singapore. We have some journal editors, and we have Cancer Research UK who are supporting the whole initiative. So this is what we're hoping to get out of mutographs. Understanding of the causes of differences in global cancer incidence with, hopefully, implications for cancer prevention. Understanding of known causes of cancer for which the mechanistic basis is poorly understood to elucidate that mechanistic basis better. To provide a comprehensive compendium of mutational signatures of most suspected chemical, radiation, or biological agents. To initiate exploration of mutational signatures of normal cells to begin to understand that dosimetry of mutation acquisition. We shouldn't forget that cancers are extreme genomes. They're derived from an extreme cell. That's why it's become a cancer. But what's going on in normal cells is a much better representation of the nature of levels of exposure to various types of mutagen. We will provide data resources, sample resources, we'll generate, we will build international networks will be, which will be the foundation of future studies. And with everybody in this room, collaborators, others working in a similar area, others to join, we hope that this will be building towards a new field of the genomic epidemiology of cancer. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>